Okay, we want to look at some uh, stable finite elements for the mixed formulation of the Poisson equation, focusing mainly on the lower, lowest order uh, Ravier-Thoma elements. So uh, let's recall the general theory of saddle point problems and uh, their discretization. Uh, this is the general formulation of uh, saddle point problems, and we have subspaces v hat and q hat. We know that uh, in order to have well-posed discrete problem and uh, quasi-optimal convergence rate, we need to have the so-called operator a hat zero invertible, where a hat zero is defined by restricting the bilinear form into the kernel of b hat, and the b hat is defined by restricting the bilinear form b into v hat and q hat. And we also need the so-called discrete inf subcondition. That is the uh, inf subcondition for B, or equivalently, it is the bounded below condition for B hat transpose. And we know that in order to check discrete inf subcondition, one way would be to introduce so-called Fortin operator, that is a bounded operator from V to V hat, satisfying uh, certain property. Now the mixed formulation of Poisson equation is simply defining new variable for the gradient of u and writing the Poisson equation in this way. Um, here the space v is h div, which is uh, the space of vector fields whose uh, divergence are in L2 and Q is L2. So Q is the, is the space where U lives and V is the space where sigma lives. So if we compare this formulation to the abstract formulation, the operator capital A is just identity acting in V and operator B is divergence sending H div into L2 and uh, B prime is minus gradient. In terms of bilinear forms, the bilinear form A is simply the L2 inner product, and the bilinear form B is the scalar function V integrated against the divergence of the vector variable tau. Now, the, by the definition of B hat, we have this property for all tau from V hat and all V from Q hat. That means B hat is act actually b applied to tau followed by the L2 orthogonal projection onto q hat. So if we assume that divergence of v hat is in q hat, then because this b tau will be already in q hat, the application of the projectory becomes identity, so b hat is equal to b meaning that the discrete divergence is, is actually the exact divergence, which means the kernel of the discrete divergence is actually part of the kernel of B. And we can also even exactly characterize it. The kernel of the discrete divergence is simply the intersection of the discrete space with the divergence free space. And we know that in the continuous formulation, the bilinear form is strictly coercive on the kernel of divergence, which means it is also strictly coercive on the kernel of the discrete divergence. And that immediately implies that A0 hat is invertible with uniformly bounded norm on the inverse. So the main problem is now the inf subcondition of B. In order to check the inf subcondition for B, let's look at the Fortin operator approach. So we need to have this Fortin operator V sending uh, sending V to V hat that satisfies this property here. And let's say we have this special property. So the Fortin operator sending V to V hat. And here you see that Fortin operator followed by the divergence. So we are going in this way. Still, uh, we are under the assumption that divergence uh, of v hat 
is a subset of q hat. So we follow this way, and suppose that there is actually an operator pi bar uh, that actually makes this diagram commute. Then for time property would be written in this way, which says that we can actually apply the divergence first and then apply that uh, projector pi bar. To summarize this, if we have such a bounded operator that satisfies this property, which is this commuting diagram property, with pi bar sending q to q hat, which is actually equal to the L2 orthogonal projector, then the discrete inf sub condition would be satisfied and this pair would be inf sub stable. So why this is satisfied? Because if this is the L2 orthogonal projector, then V is taken uh, from the subspace Q hat and this difference would be orthogonal to Q hat. So this integral would be zero by definition of the orthogonal projector. So let's look at the possibility of defining such a, a Fortine operator. We have not even defined our uh, uh, finite element spaces for H2 and L2. The requirement is, of course, that we need to have uh, finite element spaces that are subspaces of this space H2. So let's say we, we have a triangulation and we have polynomial vector fields on this triangulation. And we want to see uh, a condition under which this piecewise polynomial vector field lie inside the space HDV. Okay, so in HDV means we have the divergence in two dimensions. So we're going to focus on two dimensions only. This divergence should be in L2. And this will be implied if each of these terms is in L2. So uh, D1, U1 is in L2 and D2, U2 is in L2. U1 uh, and U2, they are two components of a two-dimensional vector field. Now, if you see, U2 is a, is a polynomial in each triangle and there is only jump between the triangles. Let's look at this configuration here where we are looking at one particular interface, which is actually uh, vertical. So D2 U2 is, is, is taking derivative along vertical direction, and that is going to be smooth or actually polynomial here and polynomial there. So that means uh, this derivative will be in L2, as long as U2 is a polynomial. So we don't need to impose any condition U2 across this interface. Now, if you look at the other derivative, u1, d1, u1, so that's the derivative along this direction, and u1 is some function, some polynomial here, and polyno polynomial there. And we know that uh, such a function, such a derivative to be in L2, we need the function to be continuous across this interface. So if, as, if u1 uh, is continuous across the interface, then the vector polynomial vector field is going to be in this space HD. There is no continuity requirement on the uh, U2 component, which is the component that is tangential to the interface. So we conclude that continuity of normal component along interfaces will ensure that we have HD membership. So uh, we want to introduce the so-called dravier thoma elements, which are probably the simplest finite elements which are uh, in HDV. So these elements are introduced in this way. So let's look at uh, one particular triangle here. And let's say this uh, vertex is actually the origin. Then in this triangle, the vector field U1 is given by alpha times x where alpha is some real number and x is the coordinate of a generic point here. So that means the vector field is radial with respect to this point here. Uh, here this u1 does not mean uh, the first component as in the, in the previous uh, argument, but u1 is, is to mean that the vector field in the left side triangle here. If you call this triangle, 
the second triangle, then we also define some vector field here, which is radial with respect to that vertex here. Then uh, by simple geometry, you see that the normal component of both vector fields are actually constant along this interface, along the, the edge that is in between these triangles. We can choose these constants so that the normal component of the vector field along this interface is continuous. So we simply choose this constant to be equal on the left and on, on the right side. So that way we can ensure that our this vector field that is defined here is in H div. It is actually going to be globally H div because there is no normal component here and no normal component here. The vector field is completely tangential to to that edge, those four edges, and the normal component is continuous across that interface, which means it's globally in H div. So we're going to uh, associate to each edge such a vector field, and that vector field will play the analog of the height functions now. So this is a whole vector field that actually gives one degree of freedom to each edge. That defines now the so-called Raviatoma finite element space. And we want to define this operator, which we hope satisfy the properties of the Fortin projector. So we define this projector so that we preserve the integral of the normal component of any vector field along any edge. So that's this formula. And uh, if you write it in components, pi u is equal to this linear combination of these edge functions. And uh, that condition gives us this condition on the coefficients lambda. In particular, from this, we can actually see that this projected pi is exact on piecewise constants. Now, uh, we want to see uh, if divergence will actually commute with this projector. So let's say we integrate over some element tau the divergence of pi u by the divergence theorem that would be the integral along the uh, boundary of the normal component of pi u. And because pi u is defined so that it preserves the integral along the edges of uh, the normal components, we will get that. So it's the boundary integral of the normal component. And by applying the divergence theorem again, backwards, we get it is equal to the integral of the divergence of u. We see that this preserves the integral of the divergence of u also over the elements. Because pi u is a linear polynomial whose divergence is actually piecewise constant, we can see that divergence of pi u is equal to exactly the L2 orthogonal projector applied to the divergence of u. So we can see that the natural pair for the Raviatoma elements is actually piecewise constant discontinuous elements. Now, in order to show that this pi is indeed a Fortin operator, what we need is we need to show that it is stable in H div. But it turns out that pi is actually not stable in H div. We need to increase the regularity of the space slightly. So, for example, it will be stable in H1. So, let's see uh, how it is stable in H1. So, recall the definition here, definition of our projector with uh, lambda satisfying this relation. Uh, one convenient normalization of this edge uh, vector fields would be to require that these integrals are equal to one. Supposing that these are defined with the uh, constant alpha of order one, let's say alpha equal to one, then we can see that the size of this vector field will be uh, h and the length of the edge is h, so this integral is of size h squared. And over here, you can do a cauchy schwartz to imply that this integral is bounded by h to the power half times the L2 norm of the normal component of u over the edge e. And here, the L2 norm of that edge function 
turns out to be h squared because the size is h and the area of the triangle the area of the support is h squared and here the size of the derivative of psi is 1 and the area is h squared so the derivative is actually behaves like h now we can actually estimate this norm u minus pi u over one single element as bounded by h1 norm of u and because this pi is actually exact on piecewise constants by using the bramble hilbert lemma this full h1 norm can be replaced by the semi norm in h1 and by scaling we can get the l2 error of the projection behaves like h and h1 error is stable in h1 with right hand side measured by the semi norm so this will will also be used in estimating the error later so if you want to compute now the h1 norm of pi u by simply using the triangle inequality we get stability so pi is uh, stable in h1 if we want to look at the error u minus pi u in the h div norm then we also need to intro need to evaluate the l2 norm of the divergence of that error so we can write this as divergence u minus pi bar divergence u by using the commuting diagram property and here now we can use the error estimate on the l2 orthogonal projection so that's h times some norm of divergence of u in other words u minus pi u has error of order h for sufficiently smooth vector fields we see that pi is stable in h1 but the standard the abstract approach that we introduced requires us to have pi stable in h div what we will do is actually go back to the beginning and show if stability directly so suppose that we have a piecewise constant uh, then we're going to solve this Poisson equation in h10 with right hand side v and let's call that z and we define the vector field discrete vector field by taking the gradient of z then projecting onto the Raviatoma space if we compute the divergence of that vector field that's the definition then we use the commuting diagram property and the divergence of the gradient of z is the uh, Laplacian of z which is equal to v so that's the l orthogonal projection of v but v was in piecewise constant space so that's equal, equal to v so the l2 norm of of the divergence of tau is equal to the l2 norm of v and we can also estimate the l2 norm of tau by simply substituting the definition that is equal to l2 norm of the pi applied to the gradient of z which is bounded by h1 norm of the gradient of z by using the stability of pi from h1 into l2 then by the regularity that is bounded by the l2 norm of v so here we are using full uh, h2 regularity but uh, there are more complicated arguments that will actually that can actually re remove this requirement okay so that gives us the h div norm of tau is bounded by the l2 norm of v and let's look at this quantity that is needed in insubstability of the dravia thoma element so we have on top we have v uh, in the product against the divergence of tau v is a given function in p0 and simply take tau to be this tau to be given by that so in that case the divergence of tau is equal to v so that's v times v and we use that bound in the denominator uh, which gives us the uh, l2 norm squared of v divided by the l2 norm of v which is l2 norm of v so it actually shows that the raviatoma element paired with the piecewise constants is insubstable for the mixed formulation of the Poisson problem that insubstability will give us Sears lemma and Sears lemma will imply that the error of 
this pair will be of order H for sufficiently smooth solutions. Finally, we want to introduce some other elements. So here we have the lowest order Ravia Toma element that we just discussed. So we have uh, on each edge, we have one degree of freedom on the normal component of the vector field. So the vector fields have this form where A is a constant vector and alpha is a number. So the dimension of this space is three. And uh, fixing normal component along uh, three edges will fix all the degrees of freedom. The pair is, of course, a piecewise constants. Now, here we have the next uh, Rabiatoma element, uh, where coefficient a is now a linear vector field. And this a is a scalar, p1 valued scalar function. So it's, it's a linear polynomial. Uh, it looks like here we have three degree, degrees of freedom, three degrees of freedom, and three degrees of freedom. So it looks like uh, we have nine degrees of freedom, but actually it turns out we only have eight degrees of freedom. Let's actually write this explicitly. The first component, this part, is the first component of A. <clears throat> and we split X into two pieces. So basically what we are doing here is we are writing X equal to x having two components, x and y, and a having two components given by this. Uh, so alpha is just a scalar a polynomial, so we get this, and from here we see that a1x can be combined with alpha 0x, and b2y can be combined, combined with alpha 0y. We can see that without loss of generality, we can simply take alpha 0 is equal to 0, so we get 8 degrees of freedom. And the divergence of such a, a vector field will be in P1. So the pair of the first order Raviatoma elements would be discontinuous piecewise affine elements. And there is another uh, important class of elements called Brizzi Douglas Marini elements for HD problems. The lowest order BDM elements consist of simply P1 vector fields. So that dimension is, is 6 because 3 here, 3 there. If you look at the normal component of such a vector field along one of the edges, then it will be a linear scalar polynomial in one dimension. Then that polynomial has two degrees of freedom. So we get two degrees of freedom on the edge. And so on. On each edge, we have two degrees of freedom corresponding to the normal components of the vector field. And we see that there are six degrees of freedom, which fixes all the degrees of freedom in the middle. Uh, by doing this, we require continuity of the normal component across each edge. So the overall, the element will be in HD. The pair of this lowest order BDM elements is P0. And the next one is piecewise quadratic elements, which have 12 degrees of freedom. And here, on each edge, we're going to have a quadratic polynomial, which has uh, three degrees of freedom. So we're going to have nine degrees of freedom over the edges, and we need to leave three degrees of freedom in the middle, so that we get 12 in total. And here, the pair is actually P1.